With my 2022 season ending on a highlight, without me breaking character and going mad and raining dragon fire in the space of five minutes, I thought I would look at my favourite gear I used in the last year. For my favourite camera, I have to pick the dynamic duo of the F6 and the D850. I bought the F6 locally for a good price and had it serviced in Tokyo by Nikon, which fixed several issues like the internal battery issue. Now the F6 being the last complex pro film camera made, it's just amazing for fast sports, wildlife, or just shooting anything on film. Even for 2004, the autofocus is still damn good compared to modern mirrorless offerings, and I can just trust this camera to nail the technical aspects of a shot. For fast-paced shooting, it just never fails me. With the F6, we have the D850, which is almost a perfect parallel being the best DSLR ever made. It was not the last DSLR made, Nikon made the D780 after this, but it got the D850 so damn right that it doesn't need to be the last one ever made. So the D850 is just amazing. If you get the chance to shoot one, you have to try it and see for yourself. You know, Nikon created, I think, the perfect DSLR with the D850. And that's why my favorite cameras are the F6 and D850 Duo, because I can shoot anything I want on a shared lens system. I actually do think it is the best hybrid system for digital and film that you can have. Now, if only some executive in Nikon would have a funny turn and create an F7 with the D850 body and autofocus, but the F6 like transport system for film, oh, now that would be good. And then I'd like them to make a D850 or a D880 with the rumored Z8 sensor, which is supposed to be a 60 megapixel sensor. Just, you know, get the D850, jam that sensor in there and create like the F7 and like a D900 or something. That'd be a pretty good duo to have for the future. So Nikon, get on that. Unfortunately, this year was not a good year for photography dogs. Sam crossed the Rainbow Bridge and Cleo was actually stolen from my parents' house. So by virtue of still being here and being the best doggo, we have Luna, the best photography dog. Welcome to the Boop Town Population, you. Gonna poke the nozzle, what you gonna do? Boop. So the question of favourite lens is actually really easy. It's the Nikon 200-500 f5.6e. It's a super useful lens and has god tier VR. If you want to try wildlife photography, this is the lens to get. It's sharp, flexible, really useful and a pretty reasonable size considering what it can do. Now film cameras can't actually control the aperture in this lens. It gets locked wide open because it's an e-lens, but you're shooting on film, you're gonna want as much light as possible because you're limited to lower ISOs, so having it pinned at f5.6 is just not an issue. Now I've actually used this lens a lot in the last year, the highlight being bringing it to the Salty Islands to take photos of the puffins there. And they're some of my favorite photos I've ever taken. Favorite photography gesture. This has to go to Alex for letting me borrow his X-Pan 2 with all three lenses. The absolute psycho. So for my favorite film of 2022, there is only one choice. Lomochrome Purple. Okay. For real, my favourite film was kind of a hard choice. Um, having a single favourite is kind of impossible because each film has its own niche. So if I was forced to pick, I would have to say Velvia 100 and Velvia 50 are my top films. There's just nothing like it out there. I've shot it in 35mm, 120 and 4x5 and it never fails to blow my tits off whenever I look at those slides on a light table. You know, Velvy 100's great reciprocity down to a minute also makes it great for night shots. Although that lower dynamic range can really hurt it at night. However, it just looks so goddamn good. I've never got tired of Velvy 100 and Velvia 50, so they're my top films. It's Japan, hands down. Any country where your ass is getting washed by a robotic B-Day while being whisked along at 200 miles an hour on the Shinkansen just wins by default. And I suppose people, culture, food and stuff count a bit as well. 
My favourite random gear of the year is this Sunway Photo 2-axis geared tripod heads. For large format and landscape shooting, you just can't beat a geared head. I looked at the Arca Swiss Cube head actually as well, but something stopped me from getting that one. So the reasons I like this head is that it's fairly compact and won't get caught on stuff when it's been strapped to the outside of my bag, unlike a lot of other geared heads which seem to have knobs sticking out everywhere. Now I currently have this mounted on my Peak Design tripod, however I do plan to get a tripod with a leveling bowl at some point in the future, which gets around the limitation of using a two axis head where it only works if the mount is level. However this tripod head is still better than the cursed ball head that the Peak Design tripod comes with, so while I do like these legs, this head made the tripod. For this one it's the one you're thinking of, you know it's the only choice, the obvious one. Ektachrome P800-1600, it's the only new slide film we want. And Aerochrome I suppose. So my bag of the year is this. It is a Temba DNA 13 DSLR Messenger. I have used this for 90% of my Japan trip and also as my main walk around bag and it just works. It's super easy to get the camera in and out of for quick snapshots and quick video shots. It can also store many konbini snacks with its very spacious inside and, and it also survived being left in a ramen shop in Kagoshima overnight, although that might be due to the Japanese people's honesty and not the bag itself. The bag is spacious, it can actually fit a 200-500 f6 D850 and a spare lens easily inside of it. Also it has this sweet silent velcro feature where if you pull down and out, it opens like this, silently, which is a lot better than this. Also it has a completely waterproof bottom which is great for traveling if you want to leave it down on wet ground. So if you are looking for a messenger style photo bag, definitely give these Temba ones a look. Uh, I absolutely love mine and it's my best bag of 2022. So overall for the year, for 2022 it was a slow start but it did have a very good end and here's to hoping that the 2023 season is even better.